Good evening, good evening. Eric Arnold, the big E here in his sports barn. Friday evening, July 3rd. What do we have here for you tonight? Got a loaded deal here tonight. Uh, I guess the core thing of what we're doing here is the Atlanta Braves MLB preview. Uh, we're just about done with these things. I think the Braves are team 26 out of 30. Uh, so we're, we're getting there. We're almost done. And then we'll have a sum up video, at least one summary video where we pick, pick our winning uh, uh, playoff teams and uh, who, uh, who's going to beat the number, who's going to not beat the over-under number, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so we're getting there. We're slowly getting there. Uh, a correction from previous video. I want to give you accurate information that the best that we can here in the sports barn. Here in Pennsylvania, you must wear the mask, at least if you think that the government or uh, the governor has the authority to tell you to wear the mask. You must wear the mask on an empty bus. Uh, I reread the order. You have to wear it because it specifically identifies waiting for a bus, get riding on a bus, you know, even though no one else might be on the bus because it specifically says in the order that you got to wear it while you're waiting for the bus. Even though there's no one within 300 yards of you, you have to wear the mask according to the order. Now, you know, it, 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 that said, you know, the, the totalitarian Tom, you know, this guy certainly uh, has no problems shading the truth when he goes around and talking to the media about his mask order. You know, he's going out there saying it's mandatory to wear a mask. Anytime you leave the house, you must wear a mask. And then, of course, he doesn't mention this gaping freaking loophole that applies to pretty much, I would say, 80% of the time to anyone that doesn't live in a city, that as long as I can stay within six feet of other people, which is, like I said, everybody in a rural area, you don't have to wear it. So, you know, he just leaves that right out because he wants you to think you have to wear it at all times. He lies about his own goddamn work. Ah. <sighs> He's not a nice man, this person. He's a bad man. He is a bad man. And he's doing precisely the wrong thing. Probably knows he's doing the wrong thing. I, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, he's just making a mistake. No, I think this guy knows he's doing the wrong things. Um, but here's the good news. Here's the good news. As I said last uh, uh, episode, I think we're our, well, well on our way to herd immunity. You know, that's where there's so many people infected that, or have been infected and now have immunity, that the virus just has nowhere to go and it just dies out. So, you know, at the rate people are becoming infected, um, I think it's a good thing. I mean, the deaths haven't skyrocketed. Uh, I think we're within a couple months of this thing petering out. Uh, of course, every mass order, every lockdown at this point just slows it down. That's all just stupid, stupid decisions, uh, slowing it down, wrong decisions. But like I said, good news is this weekend, mass protests. So, you know, uh, the government wants us all to think that, okay, I have to, uh, I can't go to a bar, I can't go to a restaurant. Illegal! Virus, ooh, scary. But you know, you can go outside and mass protest in throngs of hundreds of thousands of people as if that doesn't spread the virus. So, you know, whatever. I mean, in a way, they're, you know, in a bass ass backwards way, doing the right thing because the protests will spread the virus. And like I said, that just speeds our way on to herd immunity and the whole thing will be over. So, good deal. That'll be good. Let's hope nobody burns anything or shoots anybody or no violence. Just protest. You know, you're not going to win any friends by blowing shit up or burning anything down or tearing down statues for that matter. But, you know, a large percentage of the people protesting, you know, I don't think that's their goal anyway is to convince anybody. It's, uh, they just, uh, they want to blow shit up. So, there you have that. We'll see how it goes this weekend. Maybe it'll be all peaceful. Uh, let's see. Shout out to 
subscriber Notorious BLP, who told me I do not look fat uh, in these videos. Um, BLP's a dude, so I'm, I'm not sure where to go with that, but he doesn't think I look fat, so that's good. I, I appreciate that. Um, Rams, our friend over at Capper Comparison Picks, Capper Comparison Picks, he was asking about the plan in one of the comments. Well, the only, uh, the only issue I would take with that range is Capitalize the plan. <laughs> that's where I always, that's the way I always did it. I just capitalized it because I thought it was so special. Um, as it turned out not to be so special, but yeah, it's fun to talk about. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. It's 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 a there's so there's stories. There are stories and they're all true. Okay, now one other thing here. Gilane Maxwell, apparently that's how it's pronounced, Gilane, or Gilane Maxwell, uh, we remember this person, this is uh, Epstein's confidant, Epstein's pimp, is pimp a, is that a word that applies to men and women, or would it be like pimp ass, uh, miss pimp, you know, is that, let's just call her pimp, she's a pimp, or a uh, uh, procure of underage women for herself and Epstein, um, pedophile, uh, looking at hard, hard time. Uh, they finally caught her, you know, she's been floating. I don't know that she was hiding all, I mean, she, they arrested her at a mansion in New Hampshire. Again, it's almost like Bin Laden. It's like, oh, you weren't in a cave somewhere. You were in a mansion. <laughs> How about that? You were just right there out in the open. How about that? One thing I found interesting about this is uh, uh, I'm pretty sure the um, governmental office responsible for the Epstein case is the uh, district attorney of the uh, what Southern District in New York. And uh, this is the guy that just was fired, you know, thrown out the door, hanging onto the frame as he went. You know, you're fired, or, or, or we accept your resignation. I'm not resigning. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. All right, you're done then. You're fired. Get out. You know, as soon as this guy Berman was tossed, Shazam! You know, she was arrested pretty soon after that. You know, it just seems, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. So, of course, if we've forgotten about the history of her and Epstein. Epstein's the guy who has uh, the keeper of the dirty secrets of all the powerful people who may or may not have been involved in uh, having sex with underage uh, women. Um, certainly, we have, you know, we have Prince Andrew. Almost definitely. Almost. He's almost definitely involved. You got Bill Clinton, former U.S. president. He's probably involved. Then you got Donald Trump, current president. Possible. You know. You know, Donald Trump was certainly uh, uh, active in the New York uh, party social scene, uh, just with, uh, uh, as well as Epstein and Maxwell. There are pictures all over the place of Trump posing with these people. Um, you know, was he, uh, uh, does his taste run towards female, uh, underage females? Who knows? You know, I think the evidence is more conclusive towards Clinton and certainly more conclusive towards Prince Andrew that they were involved. So if you remember, Epstein, after being in jail for all 35 days, hangs himself. 
Oh my goodness, Shazam! Uh, you know, it, those current subscribers of mine who have listened to more than three of my videos uh, know I am a libertarian. I take a very dim view of government. But then you have an episode like Epstein, and you say to yourself, this is why the biggie has a dim view of government. Basically, you got two choices here. You're either corrupt or you're incompetent. You, there's no middle ground there. You've got a guy who's going to finger important people, and your job is to keep this guy alive, and the guy hangs himself. So you're either incompetent or you let it happen and you're corrupt. You know, it's one or the other, one or the other. So now Maxwell, who knows all of Epstein's secrets and was there hip deep and all the criminality with him, she's been arrested. So what's going to happen now? Which one of these people is going to get to her first? It, or is she going to somehow survive and name names? Um, according to my notes, let's see. Epstein lasted 35 days, so I would say, let's, let's put an over-under on this, uh, I th I'm going to have to shade the number just because you would think that the government's just going to be a little more careful now how they guard this person. So we're going to make 35 days the over-under number. Um, if you want the under, that's plus 180. If you want the over, we're going to put that at minus 200 because I think it's definitely a, the favorite would have to be that she's going to live more than 35 days before somebody gets to her. You know, a perfectly healthy 57-year-old. Uh, uh, she's not going to drop dead of natural causes. So, however, the last person in this uh, situation lasted 35 days. So, we're going to put uh, 35 days as the over-under. Uh, if you want the over, that'd be minus 200. You're going to have to lay some bucks to get that. But if you you know you're a cynic like me, I, I'm the under. You're getting, you're getting paid here to take the under. You know why not? You know I'm pretty cynical about government. You know every time something bad happens, it doesn't surprise me. Not anymore. Uh, so I'm thinking the under here is to play. You know because you're getting paid plus 180 uh, uh, that she's going to end up uh, with a noose around her neck within 35 days. So. Do I care one way or the other? Not really. I mean, I'd like to see her name names. I think that'd be fun. You know, watching the British crown squirm as uh, one of their uh, crown jewels, if you will, is uh, outed as a pedophile. I think that'd be fun. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 I, the funny thing is she has money. So, you know, I don't know what these people could do to promise her payment or to shut her up, short of shutting her up. So, it'll be fun. We'll see if anything comes of it, or the whole case will just disappear. You know, kind of like the Epstein case. You know, did you ever hear what happened to the Epstein case? Does anyone ever held to account? You know, guards, did anyone get charged? Did anything ever happen? You know, it just kind of disappeared. Disappeared. All right, so that's enough current events. Let's talk Atlanta Braves. <sighs> These guys had a big year last year before flaming out in the playoffs like they always do. Um, so are they going to come back? Are they going to be a player again this year? One thing I saw that was interesting about this team is their four best players. Um, let's see if I get this right. Soroka, Albies, um, 
the other young guy, Okuna. Those three youngsters, I think they're all under 23. And then Donaldson, who's you know the veteran. He's upwards of what, 34, 35? Those were their best guys. Ah, uh, I don't like that. You know, I, I don't like that. I mean, I think you got very young players or very old players and you're relying on these guys. You know, I, I, I don't, that makes me nervous a little bit that those kind of players, it's very easy for them to have one big year and then unable to replicate it. Either because they're just not healthy, the older guy, or they're young and they just don't know how to deal with the success or the league adjust to them and suddenly they're not getting those fat fastballs anymore and they haven't learned to adjust and perhaps flash in the pan, which happens all the time. So the, 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 the league though has, or the bookies have put them at 34, which translates to 92. So they've already shaved five games off of what they did last year. Uh, the league is in the, or the boogies, not the league, the boogies, the boogies. The boogies are not expecting some huge jump here from the Braves. Uh, they're expecting them to come back a little, and so am I. Um, the Braves, though, you know, in the last five years, they've made you money. This is a, this is a solid team. This is a team that generally exceeds expectations. So... I'm going to say 34 is about right. You know, if you, if you put a gun to my head, I won't have any trouble betting on the Braves this year. You know, I won't have any trouble. Like I said, this is a team that's a well-run franchise. Somebody gets hurt. They generally find dudes that you've never heard of to plug in and play well. So uh, they're kind of like the Cardinals in that respect. Uh, so, you yeah, know, the Braves, not terrible. You know, this is a team that could be definitely in the mix. All right, so that's what we had here for you tonight. One piece of content that may or may not hit the internet. Um, we're declaring war on our local raccoon tonight. Um, or maybe he's declared war on me and I'm just returning fire. Uh, we've had a raccoon sniffing around the house here these past several nights. And uh, last night he discovered the cat door. So the cats, we live out in the sticks, so the cats, you know, they're free people. They come and go as they please through the cat door. Well, the raccoon discovered the cat door and came in and took a giant piss on my kitchen floor. So, you know, all right, this means war. Uh, so tonight, you know, we're going to break out the trap, and that's going to be the end of the raccoon. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to film it just because, you know, I'm trying to Catch the raccoon and film it at the same time. Probably what's going to happen is we're not going to catch the raccoon. And, uh, you know, what's the point of me uh, failing to catch a raccoon? I want to catch him. I want to get rid of him. So, you know, we're, we're probably going to do that tonight. See if we can get him. Um, it, it, it's not my first rodeo. So, you know, he, he's... Uh, I would say he's the long shot in this battle. <laughs> I'm the odds on favorite. So, your days are numbered, raccoon. Do you hear me? He's so greedy, he'll show up. And, you know, I could, I could hire a skywriter for him. Hey, dude, come, come to the house. Trap set. He'll come anyway. You know, they're raccoons. That's what they do. All right, very good. Saturday, it's Friday night. Friday night heading into a long weekend of, you know, well, you know, you'll get to see your family, I guess. No sports, but uh, family uh, picnics and what have you. So, very good. Hope everything's going well for everybody else. Um, sports are coming, they're coming, they're coming. The virus is probably more than halfway over. Um, every day, just a little bit, better and better. We'll see you again. Eric Arnold.